and we're live. Hello. I'm not sure if anybody's here yet. Yes, hello to um, anybody who is watching currently. As I said yesterday, I would be live streaming again today. Um, let me just check to see if my audio is okay. Looks like it. Um, yesterday we had some problems with the internet and the video kept on breaking up or buffering and hopefully that won't happen today and it was um, just unfortunate. Hello Christina and Zargot, thank you very much for appearing. Let me take a sip of my tea quickly. It's peach mango flavoured if you're interested, very good. So today I um, have planned to make a start on two commissions. Um, I've already got them traced out. Um, thought I'd show you today was how I um, transferred a tracing onto the paper and started to uh, build it up as a drawing. So I have a couple of tracings here ready and I made these just by putting some tracing paper over my computer screen on the picture once it's the right size that I wanted and simply used a colour pencil to trace over the outlines. And I find that's a really easy method to transfer a, an image onto tracing paper at least. Just want to make sure that everybody is up to date with my social media, make sure that people know that I'm streaming. Yep. Okie doke. Let me know what the video quality or the um, buffering is like today. It might be bad again because it's Saturday. Mmm, delicious tea. I thought I'd start off with this one today. I'll be doing both, but um, I'll have to choose one to start off with at least. So I'm using um, Frisk Trace Down Paper to transfer the image onto the paper. And I think I'll go for white. I have five different colours here. This is the five colour selection. So this will be a relatively short stream because of it's um, just going to be a couple of sketches really, so mm, probably under an hour. Make sure that I've got this paper the right way up. I think it's that way. Got to make sure. Yes. Excuse all the rustling noises. So I've already got my paper tape down here, um, sized up accordingly as well. This will be a 16 by 20 centimetre piece, which is a slightly different um, aspect ratio to what I usually do. Usually I do a 15 by 21, but as you might be able to tell here, the ears of this dog are um, incredibly wide. So I had to make the portrait one centimetre wider and one centimetre shorter, and the client was happy with that result. So. Christina says um, that she didn't even know that I'd be streaming today. Um, I had planned to, but I think I announced it after you left last night. Um, yes, also, um, if you haven't already, it'd be great for you to uh, hit that subscribe button and the little bell button next to the subscribe, subscribe button, and that way you'll be notified whenever I go live. Hello again, Ebba. Welcome back. I'm just going to pull up my sleeves and get comfortable. So I have my paper, my pastel matte paper that I'm using is the colour dark grey. And I have my white frisk tra trace down paper on top of that. And then I will have my um, tracing on top of that. It's going to line things up and make it easier for me. And on my tracing I've already marked the corners because of, 
on the photograph on my computer I organised how I wanted the composition so I didn't have to worry about that so something like that I think try and find the edges of the paper And I'm going to tape down this tracing. I've got tape on a few corners here. Doesn't matter if the trace down paper moves, but it really does matter it, that the the tracing of the dog stays in place as you trace. Something that I want to bring up is that a few people seem to have an issue with tracing. Um, I don't have an issue with tracing. I think anybody should use whatever tools they find most useful or available. Um, a lot of people seem to think that uh, by tracing you're cheating in some way or um, producing something that is a higher skill than you might be able, not might be able to produce on your own but I don't think that's um, I don't think that's an issue really I think people just need to be honest about what um, what they produce and what is theirs what isn't theirs Hello Leah, or Lee, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry. Excuse me whilst I sip my tea. I might add another bit of masking tape just to really make sure that the tracing doesn't move. Zargot asks, am I the only one not receiving video? Um, well, the stream health is pretty low, Zargot. Did I say, I can't remember which one I said first. Was it Le Leah or Lee? I'm just gonna quickly type in chat. Um, again that the um, stream health isn't great the video does seem to keep breaking up and buffering I'm just going to pull my computer out a bit more hopefully that will help hello Christina and hello Nora Christina from Australia Christina says that they've got no video either. I'm not sure why the my computer's really struggling to connect. Okay, I'll wait until um people have got their video back. I'm hoping that maybe moving some electronics around might improve my Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> Move the speakers out of the way. Lee or Leah, I'm really sorry, I forgot which one I said first. <laughs> said that right now the video is stable. That's good news. Well, my Wi-Fi signal suddenly boosted, so hopefully that will stay like that for a while. I'm going to continue on anyway. Um, what I'll start off with is fairly straightforward anyway, and I'll be doing the same sort of thing. Um, continually anyway. So um, yes, I've got my tracing down with my um, transfer paper underneath and the paper that I'm working on underneath that. Tracing is stuck down securely with masking tape, but I'm not so worried about the uh, trace down paper, the transfer paper moving around. Um, I do want to avoid putting my hand heavily on 
any of the surface, otherwise I might rub some of the transfer paper onto the surface that I'm drawing on. So I'm going to start off with outlining. And I'm just using another pencil to follow the lines that I've already made. Trying to be as accurate as I can. You don't have to use a pencil for this, you can use um, a stylus or a ball ballpoint pen. I prefer something that's pointy but not sharp. But uh, too pointy can actually indent your paper. Leah asks, would you say that tracing is cheating when applying to an art school? I wouldn't know. I have never applied to an art school. Um, it's going to really be dependent on the school or the lecturers or whoever's judging your book. The thing is with tracing is that um, it's, nobody's going to tell if you trace something if you have a high accuracy of drawing anyway. So if you could trace, if you could freehand something to the same degree of accuracy and you just happen to use tracing instead, nobody's going to be able to tell. But if you can't replicate um, that level of accuracy, then perhaps there would be a problem. Personally, I don't think tracing is cheating. I think you should be able to use whatever tools you have available to create the best outcome that you can make. I think that if somebody asks you and asks if it's traced and you didn't say that, if you said that, no, I freehanded all of it, then that would be an issue because then you'd be out like just straight out lying. Um, I had somebody tell me a few months back now that they lost all respect for me when they found out that I traced, but, well, put it this way, by tracing I speed up my commission time by a couple of hours, and I can ensure that, to the client that they are absolutely certain getting an accurate result. So that's two hours that the client doesn't have to pay me for. And it's also two hours that I can spend on other commissions. And at the end of the day, the client won't mind. They just want an accurate result in um, the, the fastest amount of time possible. Uh, probably the cheapest price as well. The other thing is tracing can be an excellent tool um, to help you improve your observational drawings because it forces you to see a shape as a two-dimensional object rather than a 3D form. It really helps to train your eye in that respect. I just want to check to see if it's transferring. Oops, ripped my tracing. Yes! Another benefit of having multiple pieces of tape down is that I can be pretty sure that now if I put my tape back down that it's going to be in the same spot. See a lot of these lines around the coll collar where I've traced it they're really ambiguous and I don't really know what's happening but once I've tra transferred these outlines, I'll go in and refine the sketch freehand. So there's no, not much point um, drawing in every single tiny detail as a tracing because um, it's actually faster to freehand it. Especially if those lines aren't particularly critical, like the um, 
where the shadows are, where I've mapped in different fur sections here. They're not that important. But the outline and the positioning of the features, that's really, cru that's really crucial and key. So what says, um, I cut out for a second, I apologise. Um, Zygot says people want portraits that are accurate and a millimetre off will change how a person or a pet looks. Absolutely. And in those instances it can be really hard when you're freehanding or, or just eyeballing stuff to check to make sure things are that accurate. It can take hours to go through and check to make sure everything is perfectly in place. A lot of artists will use projectors, um, transfer paper, carbon paper, anything like that to um, transfer that in. And ultimately, you can't get a realistic result if you don't know how to render something realistically. A lot of people seem to think that you can just trace a realistic outline and colour it however you want, and that it will look realistic, and that's just not the case. And in that respect, if you've traced an outline and you don't know how to colour something, it'll be pretty obvious that you've traced it. So the pencils I'm using are the Prismacolor Color Race, and I just like to use these pencils anyway for sketching, but you can use any sort of pencil or pen for this. Um, I would recommend staying away from ink on tracing paper, as it has a habit of smudging. Uh, we're getting there. This tracing alone probably took me about 20 minutes to do. And then um, also to, to um, scale, adjust the composition. I also took the photograph myself. So um, in that sense, I know that I have rights to use it. I have rights to profit from it as well. That's a copyright issue though, and has absolutely nothing to do with tracing. If you um, use a photo that has... Uh, we should be back online now. We should be live again. I'm sorry about the um, internet cutting out. I can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. I would love to. <laughs> You have to let me know um, when you see me back. Am I back online now? I'll take a drink of my tea whilst I wait. Mm. And I just spilled it everywhere. That's typical, isn't it? Leah says that um, she can see me. That's great. Let me just wipe up um, the mess that I've made. I spilled tea over myself. Ebba says that they also see me. Christina says that I'm here. That's brilliant, okay. Um, so I have the pictures on my iPad again. I just want to increase the brightness so you guys can see it. Uh, that should be all right. Let me have a look. Yes, the analogy that I wanted to talk about um, regarding tracing is that you can't judge an author for using a dictionary to help them, you know, think of words. This is the other dog that um, I'll be drawing as well. Is that okay? It's a bit blown out. Um, it was this one. Was it this one? Um, yeah. Although it hasn't been rotated. 
Is that better? I'm not sure. Um, I'm now looking for pencils to use. I still haven't gotten to this analogy. <laughs> the stream keeps cutting out for me. Um, yes, the analogy is, is that you uh, you can't judge an author for using a dictionary to look up words because ultimately, you know, and an somebody who isn't um, as skillful as an author won't have the same ability to pick out a word. Like. You still have to be able to put the words together in a sentence for it to sound pretty. Um, Eva asks, where do you find your reference photos? This is something I've taken myself. Otherwise, I use Pixabay or uh, paintmyphoto.com. And I want a indigo blue. And Tuscan red. Mm. Choosing pencils is hard. Those will do. So I've got says, oh, white tracing paper. I like that. Yeah, the, uh, it's brisk trace down paper. Let me just grab it again. This is the stuff that I use. Um, I bought it last summer and I've used it quite a lot but it's still working, although I probably will have to buy some more at some point. So now I'm going to go in and refine this. Which was your... Oh, Leah, um, I haven't answered your question, no. Oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. That it keeps cutting out. I think this is actually worse than last night. Um, the question was, Leah's question, how long have you been drawing? I would be interested to see a video of old drawings. I've already uploaded um, a few videos about that. I'm not sure if it's working again. Um, yes, uh, I have. I started drawing again in early twenty sixteen. go darker and in my one year of art improvement video I um, showed all of my work apart from things that I'd given away or sold yeah so in that video um, I show everything that in that uh, one year of art improvement video I show everything that I created and it was quite a lot of work for just one year, but that was, I made that, I think in February last year. So it's been another year since then, but I haven't been able to produce as much in this previous year because I've been working and I've been at university. I also showed some childhood sketchbooks in a video I released last summer at some point. No, I don't like that colour. I'm going to go for something darker. And the white.
endless buffering, says Christina. Yeah, um, it's really frustrating. Uh, I wish that I could change something about it, but um, there's nothing in my... Um, yeah, there's nothing that I can do about the internet being annoying. Kim says, we've got an ice storm going here today and it messes everything up. I live in a place where it's always... In the winter, it's always snowy or icy, so perhaps maybe that's the issue. I don't know. I think also the fact that it's just half day night and internet usage around here is probably at one of its highest things all week. Uh, Kim Richmond says, at Claudia Sketches, did I miss the information on white tracing paper? It's a uh, Frisk transfer paper. It's called Frisk Down. Um, it's absolutely fine to ask again if you missed it because of the buffering. Um, it's really good stuff. It, you can get it in uh, different colour sheets. Um, there are five colours in this pack. I wasn't sure what colour I liked the best, so I got that one. Leah says, I'm giving up, see you on later on Discord. I'm sorry, but it's so bad. But I'll see you later. I wonder what the replay will be like if it will have all these um, annoying buffering sections in it. Kim says, mm, I think I'll check back, going to reboot. I'm sure it's not your computer, Kim. <laughs> I keep losing signal and connection here, so... I'm not sure what else I could try in terms of improving my internet. The other thing with the tracing, if I remember where I put it, is that um, you can use it to cover back over your work to see if the lines that you put down are, um, are accurate or not. But I can't remember where I just put it. Oh, it's here. I'm on track. Zargot says, I missed the reply to the reference photo question. Um, these photo, the photo that I'm working on here today is a, um, it's a pet portrait commission. I took the photograph myself, but usually I work from photos on Pixabay or uh, paintmyphoto.com and those are royalty free reference photos that you can use copyright free too. Just make sure um, to run them through a reverse image search before using them so you know for sure that they are actually royalty free. Christina says, I really wanted to see this one, but I must, can't get the stream consistently. Must go, can't get the stream cons consistently. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. No, I don't like that colour. So this also helps, using different colours helps to map in the different areas. Um, she has different 
uh, colours of fur, so this will also help to um, help break up some of those areas. So yes, if um, you've asked something and um, I break up halfway through answering it, please ask it again and I'll get around to answering it. There's that collar. So now, now I can see how it goes. The square piece of metal there. Leah says, no need to apologise, I feel with you and your potato internet. Zargot says, do you always take pet portrait refer reference photos you yourself? No, this is actually the first time um, I was able to. And it was because I was on holiday in the area that the client um, lived in, so that was lucky. And I offered the service for free. Being able to take your own reference photos really um, reduces all the stress and hassle that you can have with trying to get the ref the client to provide a clear reference photo because you know exactly what type of reference photo you need and will provide the rest of best result. I'm going to type it out to you, Zargot, so you don't miss out on it. <laughs> um, sorry for people who are watching and just hearing keyboard clack clatter. Um, Um, I don't use take references myself, but I was actually on holiday in the same area that the client lives. Um, pink collar. I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Zogot says, do you decline if people come with poor reference or of, um, for example, dead pets? Um, yes, although with pets have passed away um, I tend to be a little bit more lenient for what I decline because obviously um, oops, something dropped on the floor um, it's going to be more difficult for somebody to find an artist or a reference photo that's going to work so in those cases yes I'm a little bit more lenient but otherwise if I don't think I'm going to be able to create a good job of something I'm going to decline it because it reflects badly upon me if something doesn't look good and obviously I don't want an unsatisfied customer either I'd rather just decline reduce the amount of stress on myself I've just typed, um, <laughs> there's nothing I can do to improve the internet connection, but I will be streaming anyway for anybody who wants to battle along with me with my terrible internet. I 
I'm lightly shading in some areas so that I can help differentiate them. If people leave because of my terrible internet, I totally understand. Please don't stay if you are getting frustrated with my internet. Ebba says, bye bye, have to sleep, see you. Have a nice night, Ebba. With the blacks, I tend to avoid using black pencil for sketching in because I think that it can be quite difficult to um, hide entirely if it's not quite right. So I tend to use blues and dark browns instead. And that also tends to give a richer, darker black as well if you layer black over the top later on. This needs to come down a touch. For those who were here last night, is it a lot worse tonight compared to how it was yesterday? In terms of um, stream quality, connect connection issues. But um, it, it is worse than last, last night. Okay, thank you Zargot then I do uh, think that it's to do with local internet rather than anything on my end. Anna says, hello again. Hi Anna, how is it going? How are you? So I've got says it's buffering a lot more. Oh, how annoying. I'm really sorry you guys. This is something that I would usually do off camera anyway, so I figured that I'd stream it. So it's extra content for you guys either way. And um, hopefully the playback won't be riddled with um, buffering and those sorts of annoyances. At least though with a playback you can skip past them. Anna says that she's sick but with energy. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling very well. Hope you get better soon. but with energy. So the transferring process is a lot more involved than, you know, just making a tracing, copying it over and then just starting. It's um, refining that tracing. Really, the tracing just puts the very basic foundation down and you have to build on top of that. Where else do I need to go? It was like a clear picture for once on screen, at least right now. <laughs> Touch wood.
So I've got says, my husband says that we probably get satellite internet, so poor weather would play a part then. The weather's okay, actually. It's been warm. Relatively. So, like, freezing. <laughs> One degree. To anybody who's sticking through all these internet problems though, you're an absolute trooper. Thank you so much for bearing with. <laughs> Zygot says maybe not where it connects back to Earth. Anna says, when we have wind like today, I have really bad connection, maybe you have the same issues. By the way, sorry for my English, it's not my first language. Anna, your English is perfect. Please don't apologise. You make yourself very well understood. I can promise you that my Spanish is, is worse, a lot worse. <laughs> I took um, Spanish for a few years during school. I got an A, somehow. I really liked it though, it was a fun language. My teacher was lovely. Yeah, so perhaps it's the weather. I mean, I can always try again some other Saturday and see if it's also still bad. I'll try doing a stream at some point during the week and see if it's any better. I'm going to raise this line. The frisk trace down paper is slightly erasable, which is good. It was just a bit too coarse. I want that line just to be a touch more delicate. And the same here. Anna says, well, if you want to practice, I'm here. I know Catalan too. Oh, I don't know where to start with my my um, Spanish. I was learning Norwegian. I started learning Norwegian just after I stopped finishing. Spa stopped finishing learning. I can't even English right now. Um, stopped learning. I stopped learning Spanish and then I started learning Norwegian. So the two for a while got sort of mixed together. If I couldn't think of a Norwegian word, my brain went straight to Spanish instead. But uh, no, I don't think I could speak Spanish right now. It'd probably um, come out as Norwegian. This was a few years back as well, so I've probably forgotten most of it, I'm afraid. Mm, like that. But thank you very much for the offer. That's very kind of you. Something I find really important is to try and make sure that the uh, references are similar size to your drawing. Then it's a little bit easier to judge, perhaps, the size of certain lines. I'm not sure. So this is my third stream here on YouTube. I streamed yesterday and then I streamed about a week ago. So I'm not surprised that we still have technical issues to try and work out at some point. Um, perhaps if streaming becomes a bigger thing for me, I'll see if I can get better internet, but I can't, I can't promise anything. Um, I'm not even sure if I can get better internet.
Is it more stable now? To me it looks like it's cutting out less, but then I'm not sure if what I see on my side is the same as what you guys see. Zargot says it's a lot better. I don't know what changed. Just a temperamental internet. Quick, let everybody know. <laughs> Maybe if everybody comes back though, it will start acting up again, you know. That would just be typical. Zargot says I'm having a battle with my cat, be right back. <laughs> oh no. Anna says good luck, yeah. Um, I think I'm getting there with this um, mapping. Ooh, scratchy white. I have noticed with these Prismacolor colorase pedals that occasionally the um, it's like, it seems almost like the, the ingredients of the core haven't been mixed together very well. I find that especially with this colour, the terracotta, that there's like almost like a really hard bit in there that is really scratchy. I'm not sure what that's about. I'm finding that right now with my white. How odd. Anna says, my cat is more on the grumpy side. <laughs> the cat that I'm looking after now is very much a princess. I'm trying to work out if that area there is brick or fur. Because it's the same tone as both. But I'll investigate that later. Zygot says he wants to chew on my colour shapers, oh no! What a hooligan! There's a lot of subtle sort of folds and interesting shapes in the ears. My hubby saved his life, says Zargot. I bet my tea's gone cold. You know I'm awful at remembering to drink my tea. And there's this dark patch here. And this one here. So I'm getting there with her. Um, I don't see much left to do. I'm going to get rid of this harsh line. And there are some areas you can see where I very slightly put my hand down on the trace down paper and applied some of the pigment onto the paper where I didn't have my pencil. want to mark the edge of these eyelids. I 
excuse my squeaky chair if you keep hearing that. I promise it's my chair. It's fallen apart a few times before, so that's probably why it's squeaking. So now you're at about the stage where, if you've seen my other videos where I've um, done pet portraits, this is usually about the point where I start. Uh, yeah. So now I'm going to make a start on the second one. I'll need to measure out the paper again though. <laughs> Anna says, my ferret had the bad habit to try to drink the water of my glass for cleaning brushes. Oh dear. I've done that before. So it's not just your ferret. It doesn't taste very good. Yes, my tea is slightly cold. So this paper was an A4 sheet. It was 24 by 32 centimetres, so a little longer than A4. And I cut it in half. And now I'm adjusting the long side so that it fits with the discussed measurements that um, I've had with my client. And I'll often stick to them. I won't cut. I won't cut the paper down. It might make it easier for them to frame it if it's a little bit longer. And um, I'll let them cut it if they need to. Um. Oh. Did I not do this here? centimeters <laughs> so I've got says my cat wants to drink out my water glass too and he was licking my watercolors I got on a plate I use as a palette oh my gosh so I got <laughs> And it says darn pets. <laughs> and so I'd like to use this tape again, this tape that I'm using to hold down this pet drawing. Oh dear. That's if it doesn't stick on itself. peeled up so I have an idea of where I need to place it on the webcam so that you can see what I'm doing. Mm, like that. Yes, that'll do. So yep, I'm repeating the same process that I did before. Just want to make sure that this is flat. So this is doggo number two. The doggo says he is going to poo like a unicorn tomorrow, rainbows. Oh, have I broken up again? I hope your cat's going to be okay, as I've got. The cat that um, I'm currently looking after 
really, really likes mint smells. You know, obviously, how cats like catnip. Well, she goes mental for anything menthol. Ha, huh? Men menthol. <laughs> she goes menthol for anything men menthol flavoured. Um, so, toothpaste. She loves the smell of toothpaste, mouthwash. Um, she really likes peppermint tea. Um, get this right. I don't know what's happened here. Maybe it got hot or wet. The tracing paper has buckled slightly. Anna says, luckily my cat only sleeps all day and night. <laughs> so, trying to make sure that the tracing is super flat and secure so that it won't move. slide this underneath without trying to push it down onto paper because that's how you get big smudges there we go I'm going to check to make sure that these are matching so their eyes are at a similar height their noses are as well yeah that's something that's quite important to consider if you're doing a set of commissions for somebody to make sure that the pets are either to scale or that they are a similar size Zargot says that um, we got his sister as well, talking about cats. This cat eats rubber bands and the tops of Q-tips and licks plastic. So annoying. <laughs> yes, um, Zargot, these are two different dogs. This is a female. The other one's a male. Slightly bigger. Um, I'll show you what he looks like in a second once I've um, done the transferring. Trying to find that pencil that I use again. Maybe I'll use a different colour. I've got a nice green here. So once again, I'm pushing down relatively hard on the pencil. Sharp tip to it. But not too hard or too sharp that it will indent the paper underneath. Pastel mat is quite a resilient paper as well, so you might want to be a little more delicate if the paper is like watercolour paper or a drawing paper. Anna asks Galgos. Um, they, these dogs are whippets, if that's what you're asking. I've never heard of a Galgo. I think there's also a bit of skill behind the tracing process as well. It's not just a case of it's not it's not as easy as a lot of people might think it is. Obviously, it's a lot a lot easier and quicker than drawing um, completely observationally in freehand, but it's not skillless. It was really nice um, taking photographs of these dogs as well because it's um, not often that I actually get to meet the dogs or cats or whatever I'm drawing um, that I get to draw. So it was really lovely. I feel like I can put a bit more of their personality into these drawings as well. 
So I've got says Aunt Galgo is like the Spanish version of a greyhound. I've heard of Italian greyhounds. But honestly I'm not um I'm not big on dog breeds. I'm not so familiar with many. I've um not really grown up with dogs. I love them. But um yeah. I should probably get a dog book or something so I can read up on breeds. Anna says, I think I only use transferring paper when I I um I think I only used transferring paper when I was in high school. Now I have a light table or my window when I'm lazy. Uh light boxes? Are they called light boxes? I know what you mean though. They um I once made my own light box by <laughs> getting a lamp or a torch or something and putting it underneath a a tray, like a see-through plastic tray or a Tupperware con container. Yeah, it's the same idea, just like a projector. Some people, if you use thin enough paper, like marker paper, you can uh, trace directly from um, a photo. You don't need an intermediate. Sargot so says, I have a light table too. I was delighted to find out how cheap they've become. Light boxes are excellent, although I don't think it will work with pastel mat. Possibly a bit too thick. But I use my computer screen just like a light box. So how I got this tracing, for instance, I just stuck the tracing paper to my laptop screen. And although my laptop is a touch screen, I went into the device manager and turned off the touch screen for the time I was tracing. And providing that you use a relatively light hand and you don't press too hard, um, you won't damage your screen. If you're really worried, you can use a really soft graphite pencil and not have it um, sharp to a fine point. Zygot says, I can try and then tell you, I think in regards to the, um, if pastel mat will work with a light box. That will be great, thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to doing these collars. He's got a bright orange collar and she's got a lovely bright pink collar too. I think it would be really fun to have a nice pop of colour on these pieces. I've drawn um, dogs with collars on before. Sometimes I've had to desaturate the collars, um, otherwise it's too bright compared to the rest of the animal. And the focus is pulled straight to the collar rather than the dog. Um, the dog's face or eyes. I've also um, drawn or used my computer screen as a light box. So both my laptop screen and computer screen. My computer screen is an LCD um, display, LED. It says LED on the front, but it has a fairly soft screen and those are potentially, I suppose, more delicate. The touch screen is a bit more resilient to scratching and touch. So perhaps those are a little bit more safe to uh, draw from. So if you have like an iPad or something, perhaps that would be okay. So using a different colour to go over your tracing is pretty important so you know which parts you've traced and which parts you haven't. The other thing that I really like about using a computer screen to trace is that you can adjust the brightness of your computer screen so that way you don't strain your eyes as much. I mean you could probably do the same with a, with a light box but also then you can check to see what your tracing looks like. Like if you turn the brightness down then you can only see the outline that you've drawn rather than the image that you're drawing from. 
Hi Rosa, how's it going? Excuse me, I'm hiccuping again. So I'm almost done with the tracing here. Draw the used lines in. Rosa says, going good, I love the puppy. Thank you very much. They are adorable dogs. They were very lively and quite difficult to photograph. I took over um, 700 photographs of these dogs. <laughs> And I managed to whittle down the possible photos to work from, from like about two or three per dog. And I end up with these two. My only complaint about these two is that they are similarly posed. These are different dogs. I would have liked one to have been looking one way and the other one looking the other way, but um, you can't always plan for those things, so. And because they are quite long faced dogs, I wanted to make sure that you could see the whole length of their muzzle rather than their muzzle being so foreshortened that you couldn't really see the shape of them. But also because they are um, quite long faced dogs, it was difficult to get them um, composed on the paper because you don't want them looking straight sort of um, out horizontally, otherwise they wouldn't fit, if that makes sense. Anna says, today I was looking at my at your ballpoint pen videos. I've never seen the big ones. Here we have some ones called fun, like pastel tones. I've seen, um, we have some called fashion colours. And they come in like green, pink, purple and light blue. The, um, the big pocket scents, the small fruit flavoured ones. Those seem to be really difficult to get. I think they stopped manufacturing them. Or well, they don't sell them in America. Can't remember who told me that. But um, I can understand why they're actually quite expensive. But I think they were eight to ten pounds sterling um, for was it eight pens, and they're only half size. And I can't imagine many people wanting to spend that sort of money on sort of a novelty pen. <laughs> Yep. Time to remove the tracing. So that's the base down. You can see where I tracked my hand through the. Um, put some pressure down on the on the transfer paper and applied pigment to the paper. So I can remove that with a putty rubber. I'm pleased with that, it fills the paper nicely. So it's looking very rough and empty right now, so I'm going to go and refine the piece with my Prismacolor Color Range pencils. And he's grey, so I'm going to be using a grey and a white as well. Um, I've had to read the reference. So that was the first dog that I drew. And this one is the second one. Let me just get comfortable again. I've moved my chair around and now it's... There we go. So he's a bit more complicated, I think. I think there's more going on.
Um, Zombot says, if your reference photo has exaggerated values and contrasts, you can use a light box or light table with a white pastel mat. But forget the dark colour papers on the light table. Yeah, okay. That's really good to know though, thank you very much. Yep, using a an indigo blue for the, the the blacks again. Uh, something to note about the Frisk trace down paper. I really need to sharpen this white. It's bothering me. Um, is that the pigment does smudge and lift quite easily. I've noticed before that when I've worked on a piece and uh, rubbed my hand through where I've been working then the pigment almost completely disappears. Hopefully this will work now. So this is where the observational com skills come in again. Um, there's really no escaping uh, requiring observational skills to complete something realistically and like I said before this is where a lot of people seem to make the mistake where think in thinking that if you trace that's it and you can you can cheat and make something hyper realistic just by tracing and that's just simply not true so I only managed to get a very basic outline from tracing here and it looks very sort of um, mechanical, inorganic. So I'm going to be adjusting. Zygot also says, and the light table he used to try out the, he or she, she, sorry, um, the light table and that's with a very bright light table that without problems shine through 300 GSM watercolour paper. Okay, so the pastel matte really is a no-go on a light, light table. You can just about get white to work and... Um, yeah. So if I wasn't tracing this, so using transfer paper to um, help me get a base down, I would be using the grid method. Usually I use a 3x3 three three grid. I find that that's enough support to help get things in, but um, with a pet portrait, things are a little bit more critical, so I probably would use a slightly, um, slightly a grid with more squares, that's what I'm trying to say. so that I could be sure that I was placing all the um, specific details in, in the, you know, the, the facial features in the right place. It's not going to look like the dog or animal or human it's meant to be. As Argot says, tracing won't help someone who can't paint. I agree totally. I want to check that line. I forgot to trace it in. Yeah, I got it. That's another use for tracing. You can freehand something and then use your tracing to check. If you don't know how to render something realistically, you won't pull off a realistic outcome, even if you have an accurate tracing. I 
A lot of people seem to have a knee-jerk reaction with tracing as well, like, um, I think it's something that's perhaps passed down from uh, teachers or just a general thought that people have that tracing is bad or cheating. And people don't necessarily explain why, but they just know that it's wrong and then um, and that because they can't use it themselves that they feel like anybody else who uses it has this unfair advantage. Zargot says, and it's not even that easy to make a good tracing. Uh, yeah. I think you have to know what to look for, what lines to, to trace and what lines aren't necessary to include. But also just simple things like making sure that the tracing is not going to slip around as you work. I feel like the tracings that I've made have improved since I've been tracing as well. I want to try and break the t taboo with tracing, but I'm not sure how much myself alone. And there are other artists on YouTube that do talk about tracing. I know that um, Lacry has talked about it before. Um, she was actually the first person who sort of convinced me to start tracing. And HC Brown also has recently made a video about tracing. The other thing with tracing is that um, uh, a little while ago I had a, a, a client who came back to me after me after I showed them the outline sketch and they said, I don't think this looks right. And I'm pleased they said that because it's good that you have an open, honest client. But at the same time, it also meant that I could show to them, now I can assure you that this is 100% accurate. And that it doesn't look quite like how your dog looks, or cat looks, or horse looks, normally because it isn't coloured in, it doesn't have a form there yet. Zargot says there are lots who trace who won't admit it. I think that's really sad because then it perpetuates that, um, that taboo. But I can see why people wouldn't. Because you have a lot of people who don't necessarily understand who will judge you for it. Yep, and as always, I'm jumping around the piece. That's just what I do. <laughs> um, Anna said, I only had two teachers who really knew how to draw or paint. The other teachers were more like artisty people. Uh, what, like they knew sort of art history and the theory behind art rather than actually the technical skill of drawing. Mm, one put. He's got a little bit of eyeliner on. Not literally. Just before anybody says anything. <laughs> I got a friend who does pet portraits and she doesn't admit to tracing. I see a lot of pet portrait artists on Instagram and looking at their sketches that they upload and they might upload a huge amount at once to show what they have in store. You can tell that they've traced it. Um, because of their, their outline looks like my outline here. Nobody draws like that. Well, I don't think so anyway. I wouldn't think that anybody's natural organic sketch would look like this sort of um, very flowing 
like I said earlier, sort of mechanical, it has an um, almost mechanical look to it. I think a lot of people leave art schools with poor technical skills. Now that's something that I don't, I don't really feel like I, co I, I can personally comment on, but um, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure a lot, a lot of people do. I think a lot of people leave school, um, any school, lacking real life skills in the area that they've trained in. But no, I haven't. I haven't been to art school, so I can't personally comment on um, art school in general. Anna says, and the real teachers tell me that tracing is important. The other ones were more like, look at these lines, look at the colours. Oh, the drama. Oh, the suffering. <laughs> yeah, sort of more the um, exp explanation or the the um, reading into a piece. Sort of like analysing poetry. And it's all sort of subjective. You can ask one person and their response will be completely different. Um, I can't see what's going on here. This is a this is an area where I haven't traced very well. There is very little guideline, but um, I feel confident enough that I could um, work it out myself. That must be that area. My other friend bought a portrait from her and got mad at me for saying it was traced. I told her to lay the reference photo over it. <laughs> yeah, well, the other thing is, is that if somebody is really accurate, really good at drawing, it doesn't really matter if they trace or not because of if they're perfectly accurate, the result's going to be perfect, perfectly accurate as if it was traced. The only difference is time. And I feel like I could get perfectly accurate results, but it's going to take me a heck of a lot longer. The thing is that even if somebody couldn't get um, an accurate result or the, same, the result to the same degree of accuracy, I don't think necessarily there's anything wrong with tracing then either. As long as they didn't say that they freehanded it, because that's when the where the issue really lies, being deceptive. And I think people, because people assume that all art is freehanded, and if it isn't, then it's not art. Um, that's possibly where the hatred for tracing comes in. <laughs> Hi Isaac. Isaac says it's only real art when you use no materials whatsoever. Real art can only be achieved through blood. <laughs> Anna says, also here in Spain, some people get mad if you're using references for your drawing. What's, what am I supposed to go, what am I, what do you suppose I'm going to do? Imagine everything. <laughs> so I've got, says she, she's got stacks of line work laying around in carbon paper. Then there's no doubt that she's traces, but that's, like, yeah, there's no issue with tracing. Like, the people who freehand all of their work and... Um, are okay with doing that and spending the extra hours that's that's pretty awesome too but um, at the end of the day it's just faster to trace the results the same the real magic I think is in the coloring Um, yes, Anna, uh, I've got to answer about people. <laughs> people think that it's wrong to use references as well. I've I've had people suggest that as well, 
but it's generally speaking um, people who have really no idea about art in general um, or perhaps people who really desire fantasy art or abstract or something but there are very few artists I've seen who can draw something realistically and convincingly so not necessarily um, that it would look like a photograph but say for example an illustration or a cartoon that had form and anatomy very few people can do that without using some sort of reference I can think of one and that's um, if you've heard of Aaron Blaze he's on YouTube he's absolutely excellent um, he used to work for Disney he did a lot of work on The Lion King and he doesn't necessarily need to use a reference in order to make something uh, look convincing but he's like I would dare to say 50, 60 odd years old so he's had decades of industry experience and people expect a 20 or a teenager even 20 year old or a teenager to be able to um, draw convincingly and realistically without a reference and that's just silly So I've got says paint from life, Anna. Um, oh, am I still around? Uh, I think I just broke out again. Um, so I've got suggests to paint from life, and I think that's excellent. But some things you can't paint from life. You can't get an animal to sit still enough, enough, long enough to easily capture every little detail on them oh, I think I want orange Yeah, I'm sorry guys, my internet is really rubbish. Isaac. Okay. We should be back, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, what were we saying? Yes, uh, drawing from life is awesome for some people. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily work for every every subject matter though, like I for instance can't easily draw a tiger from life. Um, I'm dependent on a lot of royalty-free reference photos for animals that are not native or just very difficult to get access to in general. Um, I actually prefer to draw from a photograph. I find it a lot easier to draw from a photograph than I do from a form in front of me. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, considering that generally speaking I draw from photographs anyway. Is it working again? I think so. 
It's telling me it's live but with low video output. I think a lot of people think that tracing is sort of like colour book, colouring, no, colouring book, colouring in a colouring book, that's what I'm trying to say. But I think that also um, minimalises or trivialises the amount of talent and skill that is required to colour a colouring book to a beautiful standard, but also uh, you require observational skills anyway when tracing. Astrid says, it is a lovely whippet. Yes, it is. I have um, another one that I worked on earlier. Hi, Astrid. I'm pleased that you have managed to guess the breed straight away. I think you're the first person so far to be able to do that. Astrid says, I've got two Galvos and would love to have a, a Whippet. I'm in love with them. They're such fun dogs. Anna says, well, the other day I was doing some studies of sunflowers. With this weather, I don't think I could find sunflowers right now. No. That's the other thing, benefit of working from photographs. So he's missing white hair. And here. Get that in a bit more. So what I'm also doing here is sort of dividing up my reference photo or my sketch so that I can keep track of certain areas a little bit better. Um, Zarkot says, I believe what some art teachers have against reference photos is the fact that the colours get somewhat distorted. Yeah, I suppose that's true. He's got a lot of white on his muzzle. I know it's really blown out for you guys on the webcam. I wonder if I can change that. Is that better? We'll see. Yeah, you guys can see that maybe a little bit more. Um, is my tablet also online? Um, no, it's not. Because I didn't want to get uh, notifications. Just in case somebody sent me a private message and it pinged up for, for you guys to see. I didn't fancy that. So no, it's not online. <laughs> my laptop's online. Um, but it's my upload speed. My upload speeds die, I think it's like maximum one megabyte per second, so I'm not surprised that we're having some issues. It used to be two megabytes and it seemed to be a bit better then, but...
It's also very unstable, my internet. We've got some muscles here. Muscles. Got to separate them. There's jaws. I'm going to have to increase the brightness on my iPad again. Um, somebody asked if I was going to draw the bulldog. You mean this one? This was actually a drawing. Hang on. This is a boxer uh, pit bull mix. This was a commission. Um, it's a drawing, not a photograph. <laughs> Isaac asks, you don't use uh, Wi-Fi by chance, yeah. Also, resolution, frame rate, and the price of your computer can make a difference. Um, my computer isn't bottlenecking at all. I've checked my uh, graphics processing unit, CPU. Everything is is absolutely fine. It's under fifty percent. Um, it's not topping out. Um, I use Wi-Fi simply because there's no way that I could get um, Ethernet. I would, there's no way that I could get a cable in here from the router. Anna's going, she says, well, I think I'm going to sleep because my headache's getting worse. I hope one day I can stay longer. Good night, Anna. I hope you feel better soon. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be streaming next, but um, I will do hopefully in the next week or two. And yes, definitely, I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, that was a uh, commission, sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. Night night, Anna. Isaac, it's um, most likely my internet, it's really unstable. It's even unstable for uh, download. I can try um, putting an ethernet cable in some other time, see if that works. It might be a bit tricky, I'll see how logistically <laughs> possible it is. But I don't, I don't think it's going to change anything, internet here is pretty terrible. That stream that I did last summer, you were there for a little bit, it's a long time ago now. That was actually at a different location, and the internet there is a lot better. Had at least twice the um, upload speed. I think it's more like four times the upload speed. Had no issues then. Zogot says, I didn't hear if you replied to my bulldog question. The... I think you came... You, you came to that conclusion from my pictures that I have here. And the pictures that I have here, they're not of a bulldog. I assume that's what you meant, though. They are of a uh, boxer pit bull mix that I drew. I'm hoping that you see this now. Let me know if you do. <laughs> Isaac says, simply, simple, simple solution, move thousands of miles across the world to find better internet. 
uh, or since Argot says, nah, just move further south. Yeah, both of these would be uh, very expensive alternatives. <laughs> yeah. I have a one minute time lapse of that piece, the white pitbull mix on blue paper. That's um, on my Facebook page if you want to check that out. I plan on eventually uploading it to my YouTube channel, but I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. I might um, also, I'm considering starting a Patreon at some point. I'm not sure if I'd want to keep the footage of that video for that. So I have to think, think a little bit first. So I've got says we got awesome internet here. Well, I'm I'm very envious of you. <laughs> I'm also mapping in some fur direction here because I find that for this dog is quite ambiguous. So I want to make sure that it's really obvious for me when I start colouring in that I know where I need to go. Astrid's also going off. She says, I promise you that I will watch the whole video tomorrow. Good night to everyone. Thank you very much for coming along, Astrid. Have a lovely evening. Or good night. I'll be finishing up um, soon, maybe in 10 minutes. Just want to finish off mapping him out here. There's not much left to do, to be honest. You do the nose. Zargot says we like all kinds of other things, but internet is fab. Yeah, where I live, we will lack most things. It's a very small city. I'm finding it quite difficult to see what's going on with his nose, so I'm going to edit this. No, I don't want that. Let's see if I can see it better. Nope. Um, exposure. Let's try increasing that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's really blown out for you guys, but at least I can see the nostril now. Blinded by this light. I think it's really important. I, I think it's really important um, to get a really clear understanding of the form that you're drawing. So, where this was essentially completely black on this side of the nose, um, I could have drawn it in like that. And it probably would have looked okay, but I'd rather know what the form underneath that darkness is, and then layer darkness on top and then at least I'm sure that I'm getting the values in the right place to make sure that it still looks convincing. Oh, Wicked Illusion said something and either they deleted it or I'm not sure what happened there. Isaac said internet is a pretty good only thing to have. I definitely agree. I mean, well, water, shelter, food, those are also pretty important. Companionship, although internet, same thing really, isn't it? What's this companionship thing you speak of? Wicked Illusion, I'm not sure if that was you deleting your stuff or if, um, or if it was my mod bot going crazy. In which case, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zargo says, we got water in a house. Well. Water, shelter and food can be found through the internet. Something's not right with his nose. I find nose is probably the most difficult thing to draw.
Okay, Wicked Illusion said, yeah, I started writing something that's too long for a chat and lost more than half of my comments so I had to do delete it. Would take too long to write again, never mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why. I suppose it, the, um, the limit, uh, is it 140 characters? Is there to stop spam? Which is, I guess, a good thing, but it's a shame that people who have genuinely interesting things to write can't write them. <laughs> With a lot of these brown shadows, because of the shadows in his fur down here aren't this dark or this red or saturated, I'll probably erase a lot of this before I go in. But I will be able to cover up the majority of um, that as well. This doesn't seem right. I've got to check. As I've got says, I got my hobby on the net long before it became commonplace. I met my boyfriend um, online six and a half years ago, I want to say. No, it's probably more than that. 2010? I knew him in 2010. What is going on here? Hmm. Oh, his chin needs to be longer. Oh no, it's fine. Zargo says, oh yeah, I got my hobby on the net. Isaac says, I was struggling with drawing a rushing but not splashing stream the other day. The texture is super shade heavy, but I could only use line. That sounds really complicated. I don't think I've ever uh, drawn running water before. Sounds like a challenge. Lots of contrast. Um, That's better. I'm gonna get rid of that harsh line. Oopsie. Don't you just hate that? Smudging. Sorry, I'm really concentrating right now, so sorry if I'm a bit quiet. I need to take a drink of water. Oh, delicious. Do you guys like these real time streams and um, compared to my usual content where I sped up? I think um, time lapse really gives a false impression of just how long things can take. You know, um, somebody <laughs> commented the other day on something that um, took me two or three hours and I was like oh this is actually quite quite fast it only took me two or three hours and they were like two or three hours forget that <laughs> um, obviously if something is sped up to only take 15 minutes people might get the impression that you know it's only sped up a couple of times so maybe it takes an hour so I've got says both is good Thank you, I'm pleased that you like both forms. That's really the, the, the best outcome. 
mean, there are some things that um, just, I think, take too long. People wouldn't be interested in seeing the whole process of me completing a pet portrait, for example. Because that could be 10 hours of, of live stream, which um, I certainly couldn't do in a day and I probably wouldn't be able to do in two consecutive days either. That's just too much, too intense. Take a drink of water is a line in English I always found slightly funny. Did I say have a drink or take a drink? Oopsie, I've gone offline again according to my computer. Um, he's got some shadow here. <laughs> Isaac says, offline, oh no, it seems to be worse today, online again. Yeah, it was really bad earlier, but then it's gotten better, and I guess it's got worse again. We've had um, speculation that it might be weather related. I'm sure there are lots of potential reasons. It's not, um, it's not ideal, I realise that. I mean, it's frustrating for me, but I imagine that it's even more frustrating to watch because I just suddenly cut out and you then have no idea what I'm saying or... Yeah, that's pretty annoying. In any case, I'll be stopping shortly because I have almost finished this. I just hope that the playback is okay and it's not um, horrendous. I'm not sure if um, it records from my side or if it records from um, when things go offline and online. I don't like when people upload seven videos real time of one colouring page real time. No, I find the worst thing is if they show a real real time footage or of like and they don't bother narrating it and you just have music. That's no fun. Streams are really chill, says Isaac. Um both are good for their own stuff. Um, Isaac says, I recently realised how silly the phrase underwater really is because I found out that in Japanese you just say in water. That's interesting. And Wicked Illusion says, the direct translation of it to other languages. I know it's because the direct translation to of it to other languages. Sargot says, in Danish we say both underwater and in water. But the meaning is slightly different. And Agnieszka says, same with Polish. Hi, Agnieszka. Nice to see you here. Wicked Illusion says, in my language, both underwater and in, wa in the water makes sense. Depends on the context. Oh, gosh. My stream's gone offline again. Insert expletives here. All the colourful language. Uh, 
Am I back online? Looks like it. Isaac says, um, ironically in English, when someone says in water, it often means they're on the surface of it, swimming. <laughs> So I think we've made an improvement on the original tracing. He looks a lot more three-dimensional, he has a lot more form now, which is exactly what I wanted. It will help me to place in things when I'm colouring. And the stream keeps breaking up, so I think that's probably a good hint at me to end. I said I would, yeah, I said I would anyway now, so. Yes. I'm sorry that, um, Agnieszka, you've just arrived as I'm finishing up. Um, I'm essentially finished here anyway. There's not much that I'd want to add to this, um, outline or base. Here is the other one that I completed earlier on in the stream. I think they're looking okay. I didn't put much pink collar that's the only thing and that's what she looks like um, yes thank you very much again all of you for um, tuning in and if you're watching the replay of this thank you very much if you've made it all the way to the end you're a star um, if you out on my future streams make sure that you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon next to it and that way you'll get a notification even an email notification I think um, to let you know that I've begun streaming. Sorry again for all of the terrible internet connection, connection issues. Um, I'm going to give Isaac's advice a go and see if I can plug in an ethernet cable or something so that I'm not relying on my terribly shaky Wi-Fi. Um, what else? Um, the process of the colouring of these two will be eventually uploaded, probably Ooh, I would say in the next few months. Um, I want to make sure they're finished and approved by the client before I upload the footage, of course. Um, so I've got says your drawing looks better than the photo. Thank you very much, I got. Um, uh, I'm not sure what else to say other than thank you very much again. Um, have a lovely weekend. Hopefully I'll get the video that was due last week up this weekend. <laughs> And for anybody who's missed out on um, my weekly video, that this has been a good sort of um, filler. <laughs> Agnieszka says that she's been here for 30 minutes. You've been lurking. Thank you very much for lurking. Yes, have a lovely weekend.